So experiment three, which is all about taking mixtures and separating into the individual chemical components. With the first part of the experiment, you're separating a mixture of salt, sand, and iron. We can separate the iron because of its magnetism. We can then take that salt and sand and add water to the mix. And salt, because it's soluble in water, will dissolve in water with a bit of extra heating in the hot plate and form a solution of salt water. So when you're ready to separate the salt water from the sand, you can take a piece of filter paper, fold it in half, press down, fold it a second time into a quarter, and then fold for a third time into one eighth, and then take each half of the filter paper and fold each half down and back on itself. And take the other half and fold it down back on itself. And press down firmly on this reduced structure. Then as you open it up, your filter paper has become fluted. So when you set it in the filter funnel, it should rest nicely and rise up off the glass to allow the solution to filter through more cleanly. You'll use a bit more water to filter through that sand which is still wet and flush the salt water through into the bottom beaker. Now remember, once the salt is separated and the sand is separated, you're going to have to dry in the oven as the final step. But you must make sure that all of the water has been driven off. So put your beaker into the oven for five minutes. Carefully take it out. It is hot, remember. Take it out and then re-weigh the glassware. Take a note of the mass. Put it back in the oven. Let it dry for another five minutes. Take it out carefully and re-weigh it. Now if the mass has changed from the first reading in the oven, then you're still driving off water. You need to keep putting in your glassware with the salt or sand. Keep putting it back into the oven for five minutes at a time until the mass for that sample no longer changes when you bring it back out. If the mass no longer changes from the previous reading, you're no longer driving off water. So this is one of your pieces of equipment for the semester, your hot plate stirrers. Take the cable and thread it through the back of the fume hood and connect it to the electricity supply. We can use our aluminium block on top of the hot plate to control the heat. So your hot plate has two main dials. We have a dial for heat, which controls the amount of heat to apply. For most things, start out at maybe four or five, and then adjust accordingly, depending on how much hotter or cooler the sample needs to be. We also have a stirrer dial. You can place a magnetic flea inside your solution, which is being stirred, turn on the stirrer, maybe to mark five, or six or seven and stir the solution to evenly distribute the heat being applied. So we're in the lab and we're thinking about experiment number three and thinking about the separation techniques, specifically about the second part of the experiment where we have a mixture of methanol and water, two liquids which have different boiling temperatures. And we're going to use that difference in the physical property of the boiling temperature to separate the methanol from the water. And we're going to need some equipment for that. So we'll take our round bottom flask which will hold our methanol water mixture. We'll place a magnetic stirrer in the bottom of the flask just like a small triangle there, which with the hot plate will stir around, mixing the solution to make sure the solution distributes the temperature evenly. 
we will have a Kleisen head on top like that. Then finally, just a simple air condenser which fits onto the top. So we need to clamp this to your hot plate. And we can use one of the clamps here. Make sure you clamp it by the bottom flask. So we clamp it by the bottom so nothing's going to fall off. If we clamp it here, the flask will fall off the bottom. We clamp by the condenser at the top, then as you lift it up, the Kleisen and the flask could fall off. So if we're clamping the bottom thing, then gravity won't allow anything else to fall off. So this is our equipment we're going to use. Uh, methanol water mix goes in the bottom here. And we're going to use that lower boiling point for methanol to get the vapors to rise and separate from the water and collect in this chamber here. So here we have the second part of the experiment set up. We have the aluminium block, which is giving us a heat source, a more controlled heat source. The round bottom flask is resting in one of the scoops in the aluminium block. And we can see the flea is inside stirring around. And as the temperature rises, the vapors of liquid start to rise up. Because methanol has a lower boiling point, it's boiling and vaporizing quicker than the water. So these little droplets you see forming. Initially these are droplets of methanol because it's lower boiling. So once this collection chamber is filled up with methanol, we can then take off the top and pipette out some of the sample. So our methanol is collecting in this chamber here, separating from the water. And as that happens, we can take off the air condenser on top and just place the pipette in. And just pull off that methanol. Okay, so we have some liquid in our collection container. Let's see if we can get it to burn. So burning with a nice little blue flame. It must be pure methanol because any water in the mix, water which is non-combustible, non-flammable, would prevent the methanol from burning. So take care and just allow that small amount of methanol to burn itself out. And you've successfully separated the methanol and the water. Good luck with your assignment. And don't be as bad as chemistry hybrid. These guys are terrible. They are the worst class ever. Just children of Satan. Children of Satan. Especially, Ash especially Ashley. Ashley, especially the Lindsays. Lindsay Hudson, Lindsay Brothers. They're terrible. Straight to hell.